No one answered. The noon bell rang. Still, no one spoke. Frodo glanced at all the faces, but they were not turned to him. All the council sat with downcast eyes, as if in deep thought. A great dread fell on him, as if he was awaiting the pronouncement of some doom that he had long foreseen, and vainly hoped might after all never be spoken. But as Frodo went to speak, there came a rustling from nearby bushes. Well, I think it's rather obvious, said a voice all too well known by Frodo. Sam came and stood next to his master. Begging your pardons, my lords, but my master has already been through a lot. What with that black rider wounding him and all. It can't be fair of us to ask him to carry the ring further. And all the rest of us hobbits don't have the strength of Mr. Frodo here. As my old gaffer would say, Elves and dragons, cabbages and potatoes are better for me and you. Don't go getting mixed up in the business of your betters, or you'll land in trouble too big for you. I think in some way that applies to all us hobbits, except Mr. Bilbo and Mr. Frodo, of course, but, and I hope you don't mind my saying, Mr. Bilbo isn't as young as he once was when he first went off, and Mr. Frodo just can't take this thing any farther. So I have another idea. The council looked at him with surprise. What could he say that wasn't offered by the wisest of Middle-earth already? Surely they had thought of everything. Well, our friend Bill has been with us since Bree, and he's been as loyal a friend as any. If you will, let me fetch him and bring him before you all, so that you may see him for yourselves. Sam ran off. The eyes of the council looked at one another. They had together thought Strider had only brought four hobbits out of the wild. He had never mentioned Bill. Who was this Bill? Only a few in Rivendell had actually taken the time to meet him. Before long, the council had their answer, and quite an answer it was. Bill pranced up the stairs to the council chamber, looking stronger than he ever had. Such was the power of the last homely house. Sam continued, Bill should be the one to take the burden, if he will, since he has borne many burdens since we first met. If we can get him to this mountain of fire, we would have the strength to take the ring from his bags and break it ourselves. The council was, well, rather impressed. To give the ring to a creature had never entered into their thoughts. As for Bill, he thought to himself, Finally, a chance for Bill, Pony of Bree, to show his quality. And so it was, and the Fellowship of the Pony was assembled. The original members of the Fellowship of the Ring constituted this group, and they would follow Bill to the ends of the earth. And soon, the one ring was placed into one of the bags Bill carried. A smile came to his mouth as he thought, Oh yeah, it's all coming together. The Fellowship of the Pony set out from Rivendell and attempted to take the same course as they did in the books. The mountain snow did not let Bill cross, so he turned and sprinted back, leaving his group behind him. Soon they caught up to old Bill and thought he had bolted from the cold, not knowing that Bill had well, other intentions. Soon they thought to go through the mines of Moria, but Gandalf interjected, saying, The road under the mountains is a dark road, and there are places narrow and steep which he cannot tread, even if we can. Bill was furious. The old man just had to go. How could he not see his worth? Bill had tread in the alleys of Bree, where the wizard thought he was too good to go. Indeed, Bill already began to conspire against the Fellowship, for although he was noble at heart, the One Ring already began to dominate his mind. Bill beckoned to the company with his head, and Sam realized he wanted them to follow him. Good, thought Bill. The fat one is still useful to me. Perhaps he shall make a fine servant one day. Bill went forth, and the company followed him without dispute for a time, until they came into the wilderness of Dunland. Aragorn was the first to be alarmed. He will bring us too close to Isengard. Perhaps it is time to relieve our friend of his burden, and go forth from him, said Gandalf. No, thought Bill. The ring is mine. The pony took off wildly, making as much noise as possible, and Sam ran most quickly after him, even leaving his master Frodo behind, who, alone of the company, felt guilty for not taking the ring on himself as a burden. Bill's noise did not go unheard, as was his plan. The Dunlendings soon found the Fellowship and captured them, swiftly bringing them to Isengard and Saruman. Bill was free of his group, and now he could do as he wished. He had a plan. 
He first went to Rohan, as he found the tracks of horses near the fords of Isen, and knew that a great many horses must live in that land. His journey soon brought him to Edoras, where the men of that town took him into the stables, thinking him some lost beast of burden. Very good. In the stables he saw a large, white, and gallant horse. Bill went to him, and the two had conversation in the language of horses. Bill had indeed met Shadowfax, recently returned from the north, and he was one of the Maras and the lord of all horses. Bill shuffled around so that his baggage came loose, and from it came the One Ring. The ring could, as we know from the writings of Isildur, shift in size. And there in the stable of Edoras, Bill placed the enlarged One Ring on his hoof. The will to dominate all life came to him in that desperate hour. One by one, the lands of Middle-earth would fall beneath his hooves, and it would begin here. He, Bill the Pony, was the Lord of the Rings, or so he thought, as he existed now in the Wraith world. Indeed, the true Lord of the Rings, in his dark tower in Mordor, became aware of Bill, and laughed at the stupidity of his enemies. With high elves and stout dwarves, noble men of Westerness, and hobbits of unseen strength at their councils, why, oh why, would they give their most powerful object in Middle-earth to a pony? He laughed bitterly at this, and decided he would draw back his forces some bit, just to see what would become of Bill before sweeping the lands in a second darkness to take back his ring. After Bill put on the One Ring, he took great care to not let it slip off. He would constantly have to bite at the ring to make sure it stayed put. Now Shadowfax, sensing how powerful his new friend had become, bowed to him. Bill was now the lord of all horses, perhaps besides Nahar himself, and Shadowfax would follow him, meaning many other horses would do the same. And so the steeds of Edoras, on one stormy night, broke free of their stable, following their unseen shadow master into the darkness. Their first order was to gather all of the horses and ponies of Middle-earth under the tyranny of Bill, for they would serve as his army, worthy of the pony of Bree. Bill sought for Tom Bombadil's house, so he could find a steed he had heard tales about. Fatty Lumpkin. With him on their side, nothing would stop them. Indeed, while Fatty did not appreciate the evil air that Bill brought with him, he followed him, at his master Tom's request, to bring joy to their company of steeds on their adventure. After this, they went to Bree, where Bill, using the powers of the Wraith world, came back to his former home, the house of Bill Fernie. I won't dare speak of the terror Bill brought to that brigand. Once his former master was defeated and enthralled, nothing could stop Bill the Pony, or so he thought. The prisoner Sam Gamgee would be freed from Isengard after the march of the horses and ponies, while the other members of the Fellowship were left to rot. Sam was terrified of this creature, a wraith on the wind, who he used to call friend, but he had no other choice than to serve him. It became Sam's job to find the apples of the lands and bring them before Bill, so that Bill could feast on them. Many would be those who feared the charge of the Steed Army of the West, and Middle-earth would see a new, ill-fated age. Rohan, the land of the horses and their lords, soon became the capital land of Bill's kingdom, and those who used to ride horses now tended to them and their every whim, worried that they would be visited by the dread pony. Tales began to spread among the woodsmen of Rovanion. They would say, if you ever hear the galloping of many horses, or even just the sound of one small steed, if you ever hear neighing on the wind, but see no horse or pony, lock your doors and hide. For Bill, the Lord of Middle-earth, has come. From this theory of what if Bill the Pony had taken the One Ring, we see how the strengths of Bill were in carrying simple bags and aiding the company with their burdens, nothing more, for not even he could have escaped the thraldom of the One Ring. Hey everyone, Yoiston here and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Also, April Fools everyone, I really hope you guys enjoyed this fun and silly video, I did making it. Once a year, the weekend before April Fools Day, I like to make a goofy video in the style of my other videos, and this is the topic that many of you seemed to have liked last week during our livestream. While many premises were tailored to fit today's topic, it was still fun to explore. I mean, Bill being the Lord of Middle-earth, like, what? <laughs> and if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. 
If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and share this video with a friend who you think might get some laughs out of it. I'll link my previous two April Fool's Day videos in the description and cards above, since we could all use some laughs in these days of hardship. Please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for our Discord server and podcast episodes. Links are in the description below. Royan and I just did a podcast episode on Patreon where we answered many questions from our patrons and did a Hobbit character tier list. So if that sounds fun, please check that out if you're interested. A huge shout out to our Valar tier patrons over on Patreon, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, and Lane Grimes. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you'd like some more of our regular content, I did do a special video bringing to life the destruction of the One Ring last week for Tolkien Reading Day, and I'll link that as well. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video beginning a new series. I've gotten many requests for videos discussing who is more powerful between two characters. It could be from any point in the Legendarium or from different ages comparing other characters. I'll leave a poll up in our community section with some different characters for the video, so please check that out. Everyone, please stay safe. Tell your family and friends that you love them and appreciate them. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.